frequency offset and uh, its effect on the time domain systems and um, in this video we are going to discuss how do we do the uh, programming and we will see all the um, minute details of um, what happens when we change the differences of parameters okay during the programming now um, just to recap um, what we had seen in the previous video was um, how we get the frequency offset right how the frequency offset comes into existence and we saw that well during the up conversion and down conversion process because of the oscillator mismatch um, we will end up having the extra phase on my received demodulated um, received symbols okay and when we do the analog to discrete conversion um, what we end up with is that um, we'll end up with this form of equation x of n e to the power of j 2 times pi delta f by fs times n okay and um, we had also seen that well um, to analyze this equation what happens is that each and every individual samples is going to be rotated by a certain phase and the the phase rotation is a function of 2 times pi um, delta f by fs okay so now let's look into how we are going to program this into a simulation um, so for that I have got um, octave open okay so I have got this octave open and um, this is our previous um, MATLAB simulation where I had shown you the demo of AWGN and so we will use this uh, as the base and we will add the frequency offset onto that okay so what I have done here is I have I have created a file the CFO which is a carrier frequency offset dot M and I have introduced the uh, frequency offset into that so um, what I'll do is I will show you from scratch okay that uh, how it needs to be done so first of all let us copy this complete code that we had done for AWGN and uh, I will delete this part and let's do it from scratch okay so first um, save it and here so if you remember that um, we had seen two different ways of introducing noise um, one was the using the variance and another one was SNR so let's delete this part um, let's uh, let's delete this part we don't need this anymore um, since we have cleared the concepts regarding the different different ways of generating the noise and um, so this is what we'll be left with um, so here I will take you through the code um, what we had done in our AWG in system simulation so we had the set of random numbers right we had the set of random numbers to generate the set of sample uh, which is going to represent the samples that we have the Q channel is basically zeros and this is just to see the how much of the power and the energy is there in my signal okay so this is not relevant to us at this moment when we are introducing the frequency offset but let it be there as it is and um, then we had seen that well um, if I change the SNR from um, 0 dB to 10 dB um, uh, how the noise in terms of the constellation going to look like so this is all fine and uh, so let's get rid of this part which is the um, noise okay so this 0 to 10 dB um, let's take the noise as around 30 dB um, this will be sufficient for us so basically I have a system which is having the noise of 30 dB and now I want to introduce I want to introduce the frequency offset onto that All right that is what I my main objective is so um, what I'll do is just after the noise um, let's say the CFO is the carrier frequency offset and um, so add noise add noise times okay so let's get uh, a bit of a quick recap so if you remember the equation that we had was xn right it was xn e to the power of j it was 2 times pi delta f divided by fs times n and uh, 0 is less than equivalent to n less than equal to capital n where n is the total symbol duration in terms of number of samples so now how do i map this equation how do i map this equation here okay this equation has to be mapped uh, in terms of programming here so um, I have the XN which is my basically the samples with noise and then I want to add the frequency offset onto that 
now one way to add is okay so we can um, this will be e to the power of j so exp j times 2 times pi times now delta f by fs I can take this as a ratio okay and I can just assume that well it is some ratio with some numbers so in that case it will become completely agnostic to what sampling frequency I have so um, you can have any sampling frequency and you can have any delta f but I am only interested in the ratio of these two that is sufficient for us and then this n is basically the running n so in that case I need to have n is basically spanning from 0 to n okay this is the uh, very simple way of uh, introducing the frequency offset so let's do the same process here so basically I have added the noise and then I say exp minus of j times 2 times pi um, times uh, delta f by fs so um, let's say I will just call it as some ratio so if we name it as some ratio let us call it as just as a ratio okay let's call it as a ratio which is basically delta f by fs and then times n so basically n is 0 okay it's, it is from 0 then uh, length of how many how many number of samples I have so it's basically length of add noise which is the length of my signal minus 1 0 to n minus 1 right so this should be sufficient for us this should be okay for us now um, let us introduce ratio let's give it some value so let's say ratio is equal to 0 0.0001 okay we'll discuss why it is so small um, so let's say ratio is equal to 0 0.0001 and I think now we are ready so here I need to replace it by CFO and here also I need to replace it by CFO right um, for the constellation so I think we are ready um, let's run and see what happens here okay it seems that it has crashed somewhere what it says is well the operator star is non-conformant um, okay this is one two three four five this guy is one two three 3, 4 and 5 it's line 23 so let us try to debug what is going on here so what we did was okay um, it should be dot okay element by element multiplication right and uh, times ratio times 0 to length minus 1 okay let's see I hope this is the error yeah okay so we have see we, we have got the figure 2 and this is how the constellation looks like so if you see the original BPSK data um, the figure 1 the figure 1 if you see here you have only two blobs there is one blob sitting here very small dot basically not even a blob and one blob sitting here plus and minus one BPSK modulated data but then once it goes through the channel um, with a AWGN and uh, with the frequency offset then this is how the constellation looks like okay it looks like a circle so now let us try to analyze what is going on here okay so in order to do that um, we need to understand one important point here and that is um, let's go back to the equation and the equation says that uh, well again it has got stuck for some reason right okay so the equation says xn e to the power of j 2 times pi 2 times pi f oh uh, let me get rid of this uh, let's do it again okay so the equation says xn equation is xn e to the power of j plus or minus j 2 times pi 2 times pi delta f divided by fs times n okay now 0 less than equivalent to n less than equivalent to capital N see now the, the important point to notice is that the size of this guy n okay and we had seen in our previous video I had shown you that well um, if I have the number of samples right so each and every sample is going to get a rotation which is multiple of which is multiple of 2 times pi delta f by fs okay so this guy is angle 0 this guy is angle 0 this guy 
will be 2 times pi delta f by fs then this guy is going to be 2 times 2 times pi delta f by fs and so on so what it means is that as I keep increasing the samples the amount of rotation is also going to increase right does it make sense so what it means that if I have a BPSK signal so let us have let us have the BPSK data here and if I just have 10 samples if I have just 10 samples what is going to happen the rotation there is going to be the phase rotation which will span only across a small arc but if I have let's say 10 to the power of 5 I have 10 to the power of 5 it means that 10 to the power of 5th element is going to have a rotation which is going to be quite large right so in that context if you stack up all the rotations of all the data together you will end up getting a circle you will end up getting a circle and that is the reason that uh, we saw the we saw that constellation right it looked like a circle which was a noisy circle so um, in order to see the arc if I want to see an arc then I need to reduce the sample size okay that was the important take um, from this explanation so let's do that so uh, the idea is that I want to make the number of samples a bit less so let's make this guy how many let's take thousand samples okay thousand samples let's see whether thousand samples are sufficient um, to see the arc or maybe we need to reduce it further so basically I have 10 to the power of 3 samples here and so the noise also so I will make it 10 to the power of 3 samples here as well and um, I think this change is okay and let us run I hope it is not crashing and uh, okay something has gone wrong it seems it doesn't seem to do anything let's run back this thing again okay um, let's see what is going on here so we have 10 to the power of 3 samples this is all fine uh, this is all okay let me close this figure and uh, it is displaying a certain number of samples which it should not be doing and which is really puzzling so let's run this guy again and check what is going on here okay let's do clear all manually okay because octave can sometimes be unstable so um, let's run this guy again ah okay brilliant so now we have the arc so as you can see um, we can see the arc right so if you if you put these two things side by side then um, you can see that um, the rotation has happened and because of that we can see the arc clearly so now the idea is that um, when you see the actual system when you are uh, debugging the actual system um, the best point to start debugging the actual system is to look at the constellations and the moment you see the constellation something like this immediately you should be able to figure out that hang on a second this arc is happening and it means that there is some phase offset that is there is some phase shift that is happening on the successive samples and it means that it has to be there has to be some kind of a frequency offset okay that is coming in so um, just by looking at the constellation you should be able to figure out that well my system is not um, uh, the really good system it is apparently suffering from the frequency offset or I have not been able to compensate the frequency offset so we'll look into the frequency offset compensation also at some point in time in future um, so I think now this point may be clear to you guys and one more point that I can emphasize is that this ratio right this ratio so what is this ratio um, this ratio that we have seen this ratio delta F delta F by FS and the idea is that the sampling frequency is usually very high compared to delta F okay delta F is a small fraction delta F is very small in terms of few um, hardly few hertz or few hundred hertz but compared to this sampling frequency which is in terms of megahertz so it could go into gigahertz as well and this, this fraction is always very small and that is one of the reasons which I have, I have picked up the 0 0.0001 here now let us do one thing um, let's keep this thing into the loop and let us see um, since we have this uh, animation already with us so, so all we need to do is we can keep it in the loop and we can see um, so let us start with this point 
and uh, well uh, okay let's start with 0 0.001 okay and we'll have an increment of 0 0.1 and it will go up to this point now I hope it is not too uh, lengthy but uh, let's see how it goes and we will see so basically I have put this into the for loop so I need to end the for loop here as well okay so I need to end the for loop so now the idea is that it should be able to print uh, to us the animation by changing the ratio and what happens okay to our simulation so let's see this and run how it looks like I hope it has not crashed oh again it is creating problem okay so let's do clear all CLC and uh, let's run this guy again okay it seems to have gone through but it is not displaying the figures and probably the reason is I got simply too many figures for it to display um, that is why it's not displaying the figure okay so let's uh, oh okay okay the problem is here so basically I'm starting here with uh, 1 upon 1 is 1 divided by 1000 and then I'm taking the increment of 0 0.1 which d is doesn't really make sense see that what is going on here is um, okay let's check this it is an empty matrix right because my increment is too high which is not going to accommodate um, so how many increments that we can have in order to reach this point um, it, I'm starting with the thousandth point of one and I can have okay let's do something like this to be more intuitive so let's take in uh, five times of this okay so then we don't need to be bothered about um, the fractions like that so five times and then um, up to what point it is going to go up to 50 let's take up to 50 50 times 0 0.001 okay so I'm starting with thousandth point of 1 then take an increment of 5 times and then go up to 50 so yes I will be having at least 10 different figures so this is perfectly fine for me right so just copy this guy just copy this guy and paste it here and I think this should be sufficient for us and let's see fingers crossed okay I have the figure but will not be you didn't see the animation apparently um, so let's go and make this guy as 100 let's make this guy as 100 so that we have sufficient figures to run okay so I'm running this guy again again it has it is creeping okay so we'll have to do clear all okay let's start from scratch again okay so this is how it looks like it looks beautiful isn't it um, and the reason why we don't see the arc is because um, still we are quite high in terms of because um, see <coughs> if you want to see the arc first of all the number of samples should be limited at the same time your ratio it is also the function of this ratio right so the ratio also should be limited so if I make it like this okay let's make it like this I'm adding extra zeros there and uh, let's do clear all and run this guy again okay so we well we saw the arc briefly and then it disappeared okay um, you can play around with this um, I will post this code um, along with the video so I hope that uh, the concept of how to introduce the frequency offset and what are the different factors in which the frequency offsets are affected how the constellation rotates how the arc is created how the circle is created all these things are clear to you and uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I look forward to um, see you in the next video if you like this video please subscribe don't forget to subscribe thank you bye bye